Hey guys, Jake Flo here, the Habitat Pro out here with Thor today, and we're gonna be showing you today how to get comfortable with fire on your property, what conditions to look for that will help you do a low grade fire to get started, increasing your comfort level with probably the number one tool in our habitat arsenal. Let's go get started here today on the channel. Like and subscribe if this is of any help to you. We really appreciate the support. Here we go. All right, we're gonna take care of some of the things that can increase your prescribed in the prescribed fire thing first. Number one, wind. Of course, it's important that you don't have too much wind. We want a little bit so we can predict that backing fire. However, we don't want too much that our embers are getting carried away. Number two, and this I just hinted at with the embers, humidity. Humidity is a big one, guys, for two reasons. Number one, it can leach moisture out of green fuel that you think won't burn. And then of course the flame hits it. The air has pulled so much humidity out of that green grass, whatever it happens to be, that up it goes and you planned on it not burning. That's one of the things that is dangerous with low humidity. The second thing about low humidity is the embers that enter the air, which are inevitable, carry farther while still glowing. Okay, if you have humidity up over 50%, you can count on those embers being much more likely to go out before they hit the ground. If you get underneath 40, underneath 30, God forbid you're burning down into the 20s, just don't do it. That's one of those times where even the green fuel and the embers are just gonna cause you problems. Third, more humans. More humans is always a good idea, especially humans that have a little bit of foresight, a little bit of problem solving experience, and a little bit of know-how is of course important there as well. Um, one of those things that you can do with that is of course have a meeting beforehand and say this is the plan. If it's going to go bad, I expect it to go bad in these locations or when the wind does this, that kind of thing. Make sure all of those people have some way to put out fire. Okay, I'll hint at these two things which are very helpful for those of you that can't get water to the area. Number one, big chunks of carpet. You can even put those on sticks. I won't show you those here. You can, it, it's not rocket science. Any chunk of carpet that you can just throw down, stomp on it when the flame isn't reaching up and touching your skin or your, your pants, whatever it is, that's a good thing. Uh, the second thing is everybody needs or can have a leaf blower like I have. Okay, so that you want them to have plenty of batteries if you're going to go batteries backpack blowers even better because then of course you're you know you're able to just start it up wherever and all you need is fuel that is if you can't get water to the area of course guys anytime you can get water to an area put down a wet line a great and easy way to do it is with the 260 270 gallon tanks you can fill them up put them in the back of a one ton and then you can open the valve in the box of the pickup let that come out the back under the tailgate and it'll drop and give you a five foot wide fairly irregular but mostly good burn break and of course that's going to depend on how fast you're driving hey if you have any other tips to increase the safety please put those down in the comments that always helps guys that's the goal of the channel here is that we're all helping one another get better at building habitat all right without any further ado let's start this fire just going to see how that does all on its own there see if it'll creep across that mowed grass i've got the leaf blower in hand i have two extra batteries in my pocket so now what i'm going to do is just see how well i can stop this fire with a boot okay i just want to see what we're dealing with as far as moisture in the soil and i'm going on the backing fire side of it because you never want to try to stop a fire that is being blown at you that's just not a not a safe thing. So you can see here what I know right now is the fuel on top is so dry. You can see that one even tumbled across there with this little bit of a breeze, that leaf. What I want to do here is make sure that I understand with my burn break whether or not I can trust it just with the mowing. Okay, so what I've found out here is if I were doing this all by myself, I'm not, I have my boys here with me today, but if I were doing this all by myself, it might be a good idea to run the mower over this again, even though it's February, just to bust this stuff up. I could even put the bagger on and try to suck up some more of these leaves, or I could just rake it to the right. You can see the smoke going to camera right right now. 
Now I'll tell you the conditions where you'd never want to burn as far as weather, really windy and a humidity below about 35. I'd much rather it be super dry tinder, but really humid in the air. You know, I'm, I'm to me, I'm pushing 60, 70%. All right guys, so again, what I did there, I just decided to use a leaf blower. Normally I wouldn't because I like to reserve all my battery power. Um, and I guess that's another good theme for you guys is if you're doing this, always take advantage when you know you have a slow time in the fire where you're, let's say back burning for a while, refill your water, uh, get batteries charged up or grab new ones if you've used some. It's just, a, that's the only time where things aren't in a hurry, right? So it's a good idea that that is the time where you take advantage of the, you know, I don't want to call it safety because you're, this is prescribed fire, but get on the downwind side of this here. And so that's a backing fire. That's real safe. You know, again, safe is in quotes, right? It's still fire, but this is not anything that's going anywhere. And you can see how low grade it is. Okay guys, so you can see I've got a very predictable backing fire going here. What I'm gonna do is show you a time when I would go in just with a boot and take care of something that is not helping me a whole lot, but it's something that could cause problems. So this is a fire prevention thing where I don't want it to blow across the burn break, right? And it's no danger for me to go just So what I did there is I went just past the fire line where I wasn't in danger from flame or smoke. And I stomped that out because I didn't want it to have a chance to go across the burn break when this fire line was advancing on my, you know, into the wind here. I didn't want to have to worry about something down the way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk around behind the backing fire to the other side and I'm just gonna check that side to make sure it's not going across my burn break. You can see we're getting a real good black line here right up to what I planned the burn break to be with the mower back last year. All right guys, so I've moved down hill, okay? So we've got a backing fire going down the hill. What I did was I lit this uh, edge right here because I didn't want the fire that was uphill to get backed so far over that it started a head fire that then ripped towards my burn break without having the black line. So that's why I lit it right here. I'm just trying to keep the black line advanced and this is always the slowest part of a fire. You can see here that I wanna take care of this whole black line before I go lighting the backing fire that is right about there, the end of the, the vertical um, fuel over there. All right, guys, again, here's our burn break. What I just had to do, and this is why it's so important to have a lot of humans, because my kid was up here, but if it was just me, this would have been a problem. See, he saw, you know, the, the wind is coming. You can see what it's doing. It's coming right at us, okay? So our backing fire actually started head firing across the burn break because the burn break turns. Okay, so you have to have somebody who's knowledgeable enough to see that. And then he just waited until the fire got past a little bit, hit it with the leaf blower, and it was safe. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do here is just establish this black line where we've got no fuel able to flop across the burn break. So you can see stuff like this. You see like this perennial ragweed here? I don't know if you can see that very well. That's like five feet tall. So if that was right on the edge of our line, what would happen is as that burned, the stalk might flop over. And that's why you just need to have a lot of humans, if you can, watching fires, especially if you're just learning. All right, guys, we're gonna advance our black line. Now you can see that the black line uphill has advanced a little farther than the black line downhill. What I'd like is for that black line to stay where it is the same line everywhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch right along here, right along my burn break up to this point. And then that's gonna burn a black line right here and then it can connect. And if I want to, when I've got that black, 
I can even light a head fire right about here just to get things level so that I have the same creep. That helps you keep your personnel in the same location and you don't have anybody with the danger of getting surrounded by flame. All right guys, so that's what I did right there and you can see how quick it jumped to the left to burn uphill. And that's the other line, so we wanna keep that level. So if I wanted to, once I had this away from our burn break a little bit, I could light boom, 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 right up and meet that other backing fire up there just to connect it and get the line back to normal. But you can see, I think it's gonna catch up on its own here. So what we've just lit there was called the head fire. It's going uphill with the wind and you can see how quickly that's catching up. How much more aggressive the flames are, burning much hotter, much faster than the backing fire that's uphill, that's just creeping into the wind. And you can see this is probably going to die down here. And again, not worried at all about those red and burr oaks. Those will be fine. They're, they're not, nothing's wrong with hitting those with fire. That's actually how they're, they're designed. See that wind gust just puffed up and caught the vertical fuel there. Stick with the video guys here. I'm gonna show you a big fire burn break setup that you could get going on your property if you wanted to take advantage of some of these conditions that we have this winter. I don't know if you could call it a winter, but I love it, our deer deserve it, and uh, great habitat stuff you can get checked off. That really never, you know, Minnesota, Northern Wisconsin, Michigan, it, we never get the opportunity to do this in the winter. It's just not here. We're usually covered up with 20 inches of snow during all this perfect frost seeding weather. You know, this week we've got, oh, what do we have? We've got some 35 daytime temps coming with 25 overnights, just perfect frost seeding weather. Usually when we get frost seeding weather that's perfect temperatures like that, we've still got two feet of snow on the ground. There's just, we, we can never get it. So take advantage right now. I mean, connect with me for tree seeds. Some of you guys have been put, putting that in the ground like crazy right now. Um, Get your Forbes down, that Forbes and Forage mix from John Comp at Northwoods Whitetails, just a great thing to put down right now. Clover, chicory, switchgrass, I mean, just get out there. You know, if you're comfortable with a burn and you've got an area set up, get that burn done so you can get that seed down with, you know darn well here, middle of February, you know darn well, what, Minnesota's gonna bite us. I mean, we're, we're not, it's not spring. So you know darn well we're gonna get a lot of that stratification temperature but the awesome part about what it is now is man we can get we can actually do stuff usually we can't do stuff we're knee deep in snow but as soon as we're done with this little patch i'm going to show you how i put it out with the leaf blower right there where you see that vertical fuel line end that's a great way to get to learn something because that's just it's just nappy junk up there this is old pasture so great thing to learn with because the the sod grass <clears throat> really mats down I've already blown this clear right here, you see that? So now I'm gonna blow it back into the black. If you get down the line a ways, make sure you come back, check these spots out, especially when there's got some fuel here that's kind of vertical. You can see that, that worked great. That one just didn't want to quit. That's why it's important right there, guys. In addition to the, the embers that fly that we talked about earlier, the big reason to do this stuff with higher humidity is that when you blow stuff back into the black, it doesn't just fly up and become embers that you created. that kind of stuff is what you want to stomp out those will be sticks seed heads just smash them down so they don't have any air in them
I can see there was a quite a bit of fuel there. It's kind of fluffy with a lot of air underneath it. So I'm gonna let that burn and come up here and get this matted down. <laughs> the kind of stuff that'll start up for you again later. We'll stomp that out and just take the air away that's in the tuft. So now you can see here all we do is that would have been obviously lots more helpful if I had two or three leaf blowers we could do that real quick but now what we're doing is making sure this thing is dead dead. You can see all the spots where I blasted with the leaf blower, blowing it back versus what it looks like where I did not hit with the leaf blower. So now I'd be willing to bet that if I put a trail camera on this tonight, we'd have a ton of deer coming in here to look for that. All right, guys, there she is. Center of the property. Big block of switch. I think we're pushing, well, we might be right at an acre. I believe that is cave and rock for, I think it's four years old. Has never been burned. Wanted to do it last year. And got too busy with tour season. But, from the stands that overlook it, that one's gonna get some screening in front of it. I planted miscanthus there, and Minnesota eats miscanthus for breakfast. I've never had good luck with it, over 90% kill in Minnesota after one winter, so I do not advise it for my Minnesota clients. Um, my northern latitude clients, I should say. But um, the bummer of this thing is hunting our property. It's, it's only a 40, so we know every deer that's here. I have never witnessed a deer go in or out of this switchgrass, ever. Not once from the stand. They go around it, they go on the edge of it, they're in the Roundup Ready alfalfa next to it. Never have I seen one go into it on purpose. Just moseying through it. So yeah, it needs a burn and then we gotta, we gotta get some something else going in there with it or else I'm just gonna uh, round up maybe every other nozzle or something and uh, try to whack it back after our burn. Definitely going to get some tree seed going in there and see if that can help it out. Connect with me for tree seed, fellas. Contact information is always at the end of the video. Um, you can see the burn break here. I just wanted to show you that. It also extends around the full opposite side of this thing. Round up ready alfalfa all the way around. So that's how you can get real comfortable doing a big burn. And if you get a uh, year like this, you might even get an insurance policy like that caked on snow that we see on the north facing slopes. All right, and that brings us to one of those things that I have to do here. This is a video showing how I do prescribed fires and how I got comfortable using prescribed fire. It's not by any means a certification video, okay? If you light a fire, that's your own gig. I am not liable for what you do. So share it out there for me. But again, it's on you when you light that fire you gotta have your ducks in a row. It is something that can jump up and bite you. I have been there, I have been there. And that's what this video is all about. Getting you guys comfortable with fire, which is one of our number one tools to build habitat, while at the same time acknowledging every situation is gonna be different. There's no way I can predict what you're gonna run into out there. So make sure that some of the concepts I show you today, watching other videos that tell you about prescribed fire, getting certified for prescribed fire, those are all great things to help you increase your ability in deer habitat and your ability to stay safe and keep others safe.